Hi, welcome to three strategies for achieving great video quality without breaking the bank. My name is Kevin Moore. I'm the Director of Product Management at AWS Elemental for Live Transcoding Technologies. Today I want to talk to you about three strategies that you can use to achieve great video quality. Everyone whose business is delivering video, whether over the internet or any other channel, is interested in quality. If we're going to deliver video, we want that video to look great. Now, of course, there's lots of techniques we can use to improve video quality, but we want to make sure that the, that the techniques that we use to improve that quality uh, don't break the bank, as it were, that they don't cost too much, whether that's a cost in direct hardware purchases or whether that's a cost in things like CDN delivery costs or, or general bandwidth costs. So the three strategies we're going to be focusing on today are one, better outputs. So to us, better outputs means making sure that the encoding that you're doing is aligned with the properties of the delivery channel. Most of our customers are delivering their video over the internet. And for those customers, those OTT customers, we really want to uh, go through and talk about uh, the encoding method called QVBR, Quality Defined Variable Bit Rates. But the second strategy we're going to talk about is better inputs. And that's a review of what's available in Elemental Live Transcoding software around pre-filtering. So making those pictures optimal before they're ever put through the encoding process. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how your choice of encoding platform can really influence the development of your underlying engine over time. And that can have a significant impact on the quality that you're able to deliver to your customers as time goes on. So let's jump in here. As far as uh, better outputs goes, we really want to focus on the fact that video is natively variable in complexity. So what do we mean by that? As we produce content for our viewers to enjoy watching, if you really sit back and analyze it scene by scene, what you'll notice is the content that we deliver has varying needs in terms of its fundamental complexity. So uh, another way of saying that is that in order to hit a consistent quality target, some scenes want a lot more bits in order to hit that quality target whereas some scenes can be completely satisfied at a quality target with a reduced number of bits. So ideally, to maintain quality, we would want bitrate to vary over time, to match the varying quality over time. And this graph that we're showing here is a basic representation of that. So imagine that we're talking here about a few minutes of a video, maybe it's two or three minutes, and we've got five scenes in that video. And we've sorted those scenes by their fundamental complexity. We've got hard, very hard, moderate, and easy scenes. And as you can see, uh, so you can imagine here the content, such as the, the very hard content, might be uh, a panning shot of a crowd, or there could be explosions going on, or confetti, or, or things like that that just create a lot of dynamic motion on the scene. And it requires a lot of bits to accurately convert all of that dynamic motion and activity uh, into uh, a code stream that can be recovered by a decoder and re uh, recreated faithfully. Then we could imagine that a scene could show up that was moderate or easy that perhaps was very much like this scene right now where it's a single speaking individual, uh, it's a close-up of their face, there's no panning whatsoever, and there's just not a lot of motion in that scene. So not very many bits are necessary to deliver that scene at the quality target of the video. So as you can imagine, in order to encode this video, we want to have a rate control mode where, where rate control is the term for how we instruct the encoder to behave over time. We want a rate control mode that can really kind of follow that quality curve throughout the video. So to put this into a broader context, uh, there's a couple of different encoding, new encoding methods in the industry. And we wanted to just sort of, um, as I said, put this into context here. So you can imagine that you can have an optimization that happens at a per title level. 
or you can have an optimization at a per scene level or a frame level or a macro block level. And uh, what we're showing here is that sort of the deeper you get into the video, the more of a fundamental impact you can have and the greater the savings that you can realize. Now again, to put this into perspective, AWS Elemental's QVBR technology is something that operates scene to scene. Uh, it adjusts individual frames and it has a direct impact on the macro block level. Um, it's not something that requires you to go over an entire title. It doesn't require a deep analysis phase. You can run it live. We're only taking advantage of those three levels of hierarchy where we think we can get the most impact. So that's kind of QVBR in context there. Um, so as I mentioned before, QVBR is a rate control that adjusts to different kinds of content and scenes. The encoder is changing its quantization and bit rate in order to hit that consistent quality target. It uses the statistics that were already being generated in order to make sure that we were doing optimal perceptual encoding in the first place. And the key takeaway point is that QVBR saves bits when the quality level for a given scene is reached, even if it's authorized to use more bits. And so let's take a look at that pictorially here. So here uh, at the top of the screen, I'm showing a graph. Uh, orange represents, similar to the green graph from before, orange represents what the video uh, wants in order to have a consistent quality. So in this scene, we have low complexity content at the beginning of the clip. In the middle of the content, we have peak complexity. Maybe that's the crowd pan or the explosion or the confetti. And then at the end of the content, we are, are back again at a lower complexity. So gray represents what we would get if we attacked this clip with uh, CBR rate control mode. So that's a constant bit rate. The gray line is flat for the entire time. And you can see this kind of s chops the video up into three different uh, regions, none of them good. In the first region, we're wasting bits. CV CBR rate control mode is cranking out more bits, even though we're already past the point of the human viewer being able to discern that increase in quality. We didn't really increase effective quality there. But then we get into the middle section of the video where that exciting action is happening and we're still going along at that constant quality rate. So now we're starting to get into some obvious VQ artifacts, uh, some obvious picture artifacts because we didn't authorize the encoder with enough bits to get anywhere close to the peak complexity of that scene. We're still moving along at that same bit rate with no changes whatsoever. And then when that scene complexity drops again, we're still moving along at the same bit rate and we're back in the regime where we're wasting bits again. So all in all, this is pretty unsatisfactory. Now you could imagine tuning that gray level and of course any encoder allows you to adjust that parameter, but really you're just trading things off. You can solve your peak bit rate problem, but only at the price of wasting more bits. You can waste fewer bits, but you'll make your peak bit rate problem worse. So this is a problem that is definitely in need of a solution. And for that, we can look to QVBR. So here's again that same video content now being presented uh, with a QVBR rate control mode. So because we're using QVBR, we've really addressed the wasted bits problem. When we're in the low complexity periods of content, QVBR is authorized to just put out fewer bits, which is great. So you can see at the left and the right hand portions of the video, there's no wasted bits. We've hit the quality target exactly where we want to be. You can also see that in the middle of the content where the complexity is the highest, QVBR is able to deliver substantially more bits and therefore higher video quality. Now I've set up this demonstration uh, at this level to highlight the other property of the QVBR rate control, which is the maximum bit rate. <clears throat> it's all well and good for us to say that video content has a uh, sort of time varying property and that we wanna pursue a constant quality. But the truth is there's some video that's so complex that to truly say we had delivered it with a target quality, we might need to allocate an almost unbounded amount of bits to that section of video. And there's a number of reasons why that might not be appropriate, namely that the delivery channel just might not be able to go any higher than that. So 
In the QVBR rate control mode, you as the customer can specify not only the quality target, but also a maximum bit rate. So it's kind of a speed limit on the whole thing that keeps the algorithm from ever going higher than that maximum target. And that gives you something that you can rely on further down the chain, such as in your CDN network or in your player. And you're confident that those, uh, that those encoded renditions are never going to go higher than that bit rate. And that's really what we wanted to demonstrate here. Certainly that maximum bit rate could have been set higher. We could achieve peak complexity, but we wanted to highlight that that property exists. Okay, so that's QVBR. Now we're gonna talk about our second strategy, better inputs. So, and by focusing on the input of the process, what we really mean is focusing on pre-filtering. So it's important in video encoding to focus on pre-filtering because there's a certain amount of work that you can do at the front end that gives the encoder a better set of frames to work on. And Elemental's live encoding products, such as Elemental Live and Elemental Media Live, offer these features. And it's very important to understand them and know how to apply them to your video in order to realize savings. So the most common type of filtering that's out there today is uh, de-blocking and de-mosquito filters. So <clears throat> what do I mean when we talk about de-blocking and de-mosquito uh, filters? Um, typically, these two filters are used to clean up problems that come from previous encodes. So artifacts in encoded video oftentimes take two forms. One, the uh, the, the block structure of the previous encode, especially for simpler encodes such as MPEG-2 encoding, are revealed obviously in the decoded video. It's very clear that you're dealing with an array of blocks rather than a continuous video image that the real world would present. The other issue is called mosquito noise, and that's basically the noise from over-quantizing the video. And it ends up being the residual of the discrete cosine transform where we're just left with a, a kind of noise that doesn't have any real analogy in the real world. It's very distracting. It clusters around the edges of our video. It's not a good look. And so it has this kind of funny name, mosquito noise, because it looks like a, a swarm of mosquitoes flying around the edge of the video. So in the Elemental Live and Elemental Media Live products, we uh, provide you with the ability to activate de-blocking and de-mosquito noise filters. So you can basically take those artificial structures out of the video, smooth that back out before putting it through the encoder. Remember that the encoder is just encoding the actual pixel values that it gets. So it's important that if there's anything in those pixel values that really shouldn't be there because it's problems from the previous encode generation, we want to filter that out. But as I said, that's really a, that's really a basic level. And, uh, You'll find that in, in many encoders, and, and these are longstanding techniques, but I wanted to make you aware of it because it's important to know what they are and, and to know that you should turn them on if you find yourself in this situation. Uh, however, pre-filtering can actually go much deeper, and I wanted to explain a little bit more about uh, some new technology that AWS Elemental has delivered, which is a uh, perceptual uh, temporal filter they can do a great job of reducing noise. So uh, the perceptual temporal filter is what we call a motion compensated perceptual filter. So again, we're trying to take noise out of the video that shouldn't really be there. Noise that's there probably due to prior encoding processes. So the nice thing is that that encoding noise is usually has a sort of random property. And if you look across time, you can begin to filter that out pretty effectively and get back to what really should have been in that video in the first place. Um, in our tests, in our development, we have found that this can reduce the delivered bitrate of the video by up to 20% without any perceptible loss of detail. Uh, there are some content dependent features here, again, since you are filtering out unwanted aspects of the input content, um, it's, it's important that the filter be adjustable, and ours certainly is. Um, and it's worth pointing out that some types of noise in the signal 
are actually appreciated and desirable, most notably film grain. So this temporal filter is able to understand the pattern of film grain and does a great job of not, uh, not filtering it out. So what I have here on the screen is a screenshot from the latest version of uh, our AWS Elemental Live software product. And it shows that in the noise reducer section, you can engage a temporal filter and uh, control its, uh, its speed and its strength and deliver a great result. So what we're gonna do here is focus in on some video. This is a somewhat expanded view of a piece of input content. Uh, this is from the popular EBU test clip called Crowd Run. Some of you may be familiar with it. I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, and so we have a large crowd in a park. There's a tree background, and then you can see the sky. This is the source as it came in. What we're gonna show here is the output of our perceptual filter before any encoding happened. So you can see we've removed a ton of noise out of that uh, cloud background, and we've cleaned up the trees as well, but we've preserved the sharpness and the edges and the dynamic colors of all the crowds. You can still see the flag, the building in the background, the yellow and white tent, the signage, all the people, and what you'll really notice is that as the crowd moves, uh, they're kept clean, whereas the, uh, the noise that would have been in the clouds uh, is, is really pulled out. So this is a super powerful technique, and we're excited for our, our customers to use it in order to deliver even better video quality to their customers. Now, the last strategy that we wanted to highlight here is uh, to make sure that the encoding systems that you're using are on a path of forward compatibility, that they're basically on an upgrade train. Make sure that the encoding technology that you're using is under active development, that you can be confident that there's always gonna be great new things coming down the pipe for you to use without having to do any additional work or to make a big workflow change or to bring in another system or change out hardware or anything like that. And this is one of the reasons why we are so excited about software-defined video. On the exact same hardware platforms and in our cloud-based transcoding service, we've been able to deliver all of these features just in the last six months. These are new, very detail-oriented features that have come out in the AWS Elemental Live product and the AWS Elemental Media Live product just over the last six months. So you can see here, uh, you know, some of the highlights that we've talked about, like QVBR encoding, QVBR optimization for HEVC. We've improved high dynamic range. Um, we've changed our B-frames algorithm. Um, the spatial filter we talked about. Uh, we've improved uh, down conversion from 1080i. Um, we've introduced new color spaces, um, so on and so forth. So this is really just represents six months of progress on an active software defined video encoding solution. And I think that this kind of chain of continuous incremental improvement really differentiates a software defined solution from a solution that's purely defined by hardware or ASIC based or whatever you wanna call it. So that's that. Those are three strategies uh, that we're, uh, that we wanted to talk with you about today. One is, the first of course was better outputs, which uh, primarily means matching the encoding to your channel, which for OTT really means taking a look at QVBR encoding. Uh, the second strategy of course is making sure that you're taking full advantage of all the pre-filtering that's available in your encoder. And the third strategy is just making sure that your encoding platforms can deliver consistent month after month improvement in video quality and video quality features. So that's that. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I appreciate you watching this seminar. Uh, please take the time to check out the other sessions that are going on in the online conference. And if you have questions about this presentation, uh, please visit the Ask an Architect area and get your question logged and we will get back to you with an answer. Thank you so much.